The mythologist Joseph Campbell, who I adore, wrote in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, that every single story, every myth, follows a consistent pattern, right? There's this universal meta pattern for the hero's journey that shows up in every story across cultures, across religions, you name it. And so the idea is that mythology provides a lens, it provides a map that we can apply to our own unique circumstances to make sense of our lives. Because to understand is to perceive patterns, right? And so the hero's journey is a pattern that takes all these seemingly meaningless events that happen to us in our lives and provides a sense of directionality and purpose, an archetype that we can use as our North Star, right? That imbues our lives with a sense of meaning and signification, right? We are hermonauts, travelers in search of signification. And so one of the key steps in the hero's journey, <laughs> before he answers the call to adventure, he needs to figure out what is his passion, right? So how do you find your passion? Well, according to the work of Stephen Kotler, not everybody knows what their passion is, but what they might be able to identify is several things they're curious about. So you start with that. You start with curiosity, right? I may not know my passion, but I know what I'm curious about. So make a list of 10 or more things you're really curious about. I'm curious about science. I'm curious about the universe. I'm curious about the human situation, what it is to be aware that you're aware, right? And maybe I'm curious about romantic love. I make a list. And then I find a, a place on that list where the things that I'm curious about actually overlap. Like it's kind of like a Venn diagram. Is there anywhere that these overlap? Okay, well, science and the universe, those things overlap. And like the nature of romantic love, yeah, that's interesting. And what it is to be aware that we're aware. Also, all these things are mediated through consciousness. So then I'm finding all these overlaps. Consciousness mediates our experience of the world. Science is still filtered through consciousness. And we use science to make sense of things and so on and so forth. And then, and then maybe even love can be explained through science. So there I've linked all those things together. And so passion exists at the intersection of all those things that you're curious about. Passion, the intersection of those things is where there's there's neurobiology, there's like activity, there's energy there, there's dopamine there. So again, you start with curiosity, you make a list, you find where those things overlap, you get to your passion. What do you do next? You go find a need in the world that can be served by your passion, right? There's poverty, there's suffering, there's illiteracy. People need inspiration. People need to pierce their filter bubble. People need to pierce their echo chamber. People need to be woken up, right? To arrest the mind's attention from the lethargy of custom and the film of familiarity and banality and redirect it towards the wonders of existence. So maybe what I want to do is make media that agitates the sleep of mankind. Media that helps people wake up. So that's a need in the world that can be served by my passion. So curiosity leads to passion. Passion can be served by finding something in the world that it can be served for, and then passion turns into purpose. So you see that direction? So now I've figured out what my hero's journey is. Now I'll know when to answer the call. Now I've primed my brain with curiosity, passion, and purpose, and I can go forth and slay those dragons and make some kind of mark on the world, carving on the tree, and say, I was here. <laughs> X marks the spot. So, go forth, my brothers. Go forth.